So previously, we have computed the cohomology groups of the torus. Now the advantage of cohomology over homology is that the, there is a natural ring structure on cohomology. Thus we do not want to stop at the cohomology groups. We will now find the cohomology ring of the torus. So let our manifold M be the torus given by the quotient of R square uh, by the lattice a lambda equal to z squared. In the ring structure of this cohomology, we want to first find its vector space structure. And more specifically, we want to give a real vector space basis for this. And we'll construct this basis as follow. Observe that we have a natural quotient map from the plane to M, right? from the point to our torus. This induces a pullback map on differential forms. Now, if we let x and y be the coordinate on the plane, then we have one form dx and dy. And then we will define alpha and beta to be the forms on the torus whose pullback is dx and dy. If we define alpha and beta that way, then it turns out that alpha beta 1 and the wedge product of alpha and beta form a basis for this cohomology. Alright, but something is a bit sketchy here. How do we know that there are such alpha and beta? In other words, how do we know that dx and dy lies inside the image of this pullback map? Thus, in this video, we are gonna give a description of the image of this pullback map. And then from that, we'll see that dx and dy must lie in this image. This is actually a generalization of the case of the circle, so let us review the discussion about circle. Note that this discussion was part of the video on how to compute the cohomology of the circle using the definition. Recall that when we were computing cohomology group of the circle using definition, the key tool is the following parameterization of the circle right, by cosine t sine t. That parametrization allows us to view smooth function on the circle as periodic function on R. Now more precisely, we have a pullback map right, on smooth function on S1, and we prove that the image of that map, specifically the smooth function on R, that are periodic of period 2 pi. We of course also have a pullback map on one form, right? What is the image of this map? Recall that previously we have defined a one form omega on S1 such that the pullback of omega is just the one form dt on R if t is the coordinate on R. Then every one form on S1 is just gonna be a multiple of omega with a smooth function. And so that pullback is just gonna be the pullback of the smooth function multiplied with dt. Now as we mentioned this this pullback is gonna be periodic of period 2 pi, right? Thus, the image of this pullback map consists of the one form that are multiple of dt by a smooth function that is periodic of period 2 pi. Now, there is a way to rephrase this. These are exactly the one form that is invariant under translation by 2 pi. What do we mean? Well, if we consider the map that sends every real number to um, itself plus 2 pi, then every function in here is going to be invariant under pulling back by this translation, right? Why is that? Because if g here is periodic with periods 2 pi, when we pull this back, where we have a pullback of g and multiply with uh, d of pullback of t. Now pullback of g under 2 pi is just g because g is periodic with period 2 pi and d of this is just dt. So this uh, one form is invariant under this translation. Thus, the image of this are exactly the one forms that are invariant under translation by 2 pi. Thus, if we combine these two maps to get this uh, single map right, between graded algebra, then we see that the image of this map can be described as the zero form or one form that are invariant under translation by integer multiple of 2 pi. In the case of the torus, the claim is similar. We claim that the image of this pullback map are just gonna be all the differential forms that are invariant under translation by lattice element. Okay, so let's try to prove this. 
Alright, so let's start by proving this containment. So let's take some one form on R2 that is in this image. So it, it's the pullback of some form tau on the torus. Thus we have a form tau here, right? And then we have the pullback form, uh, pi star of tau. We want to show that this is invariant under translation by this letter. So that means that if we take any lattice element, L lambda, then this form should be invariant under left translation by lambda. In other words, we want to show that if we pull back this form via this uh, translation by lambda, we get back the, the form itself. Okay, so we want to show this, and this is simply because observe that this is just the pullback under this composition, right, of tau. But pi composed with this translation is just pi. Okay, so let's see why pi composed with L lambda is just equal to pi. Well, let's apply it to some point Q. Okay, so let's say we have a point Q here, right? Then pi of Q is here. On the other hand, what is pi composed with L lambda and then apply to Q? Well, we can obtain that by first translating Q by lambda and then projects down. Now because lambda though is a lattice point, these two points are gonna actually lie in the same equivalence class here in R square mod this lattice. So the image in both of these cases are the same. And thus we have that pi composed with L lambda is just gonna be pi. So we see that this one form is invariant under translation by lattice point. And thus we have this inclusion. We see that the pullbacks of these uh, one forms on the torus must be invariant under translation by the lattice.